from their Eaglewood, California plant that was destined to change the air war in World War II. The airplane climbing now through the vertical. Is that airplane? The Mustang, as it was named by the Royal Air Force, who actually ordered this airplane first, before the United States Army Air Forces. Young men, some of them still in their teens, graduated from flying the North American Texan and moved on to the Mustang. In total, some 15,000 Mustangs were built and about 1% of that production run remains flyable today. And the one that's overhead, named Quicksilver, never saw combat in World War II, but is the product of a 16-year restoration project. Started by a guy named Bill Jones, a gentleman who had worked in Hollywood as a pilot, as a metal fabricator, and took on the job of bringing this airplane that was shy of many, many parts and turning it into a better than factory new Mustang. He flew the airplane, Bill did. He also taught his son how to fly it, Scott Scooter Yoke. And as we look at an airplane like this, which was one of the highest performance fighters in all of World War II, and think of the talent and skill it took to fly, and think that Scooter learned how to fly this airplane, got checked out in a Mustang when he was just 20 years old. That seems astounding, but in fact, it was the average age of a Mustang pilot in World War II. A Rolls-Royce designed Merlin B-12 liquid cooled engine, different models of which generated between 1400 and 1700 horsepower, depending on the model and whose books you're reading. It gave it a top speed of over 400 miles per hour. And when fitted with a very, very unique paper mache type drop tank, or two of them, I should say, it extended the range of the Mustangs so that it could escort the heavy bombers all the way to their targets and back, protecting the big planes, the heavy bombers, from the onslaught of the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force fighters, the Messerschmitt BF-109s, and the Focke-Wulf FW-190s. Many of the parts and skins were handmade by Scott's dad, Bill, from scratch and to the original factory blueprint. The restoration completed in 27, uh, 2007. Scott took the controls and has been flying it ever since. Performing now a very difficult 16-point hesitation roll, stopping the aircraft every 22 and a half degrees of rotation. Unfortunately, we lost Bill Yoke a few years ago to cancer. But Scott flies it not in only honor not only of his dad, but as a custodian flying a piece of living history honoring the men who flew them in World War II. Bill Yoke will be missed, but he'll be remembered as a skilled pilot and craftsman who always shared his talents and knowledge with others. He opened the cockpit of Quicksilver to anyone to climb in and enjoy. Blue skies and tailwinds, Bill Yoke.
represents those who have served and those who gave their lives in the ultimate sacrifice. The black cape covering the front of the aircraft represents the veil of protection that our armed forces give us. That veil is one of the reasons why we have what we have today, freedom. As the cape extends to the back of the canopy, it spreads out and divides into feathers, symbolizing the eagle that has flown with every aviator since the birth of aviation in 1903. The black paint has tiny sparkling stars in it. Each sparkle represents an American veteran that served our great country. The unsung stars in our lives, these veterans are the glimmering star in a mother's eye, a wife or husband's heart, a son or daughter's hope for the future. The silver ring behind the spinner represents the shining halo of the guardian angel who guides service personnel, having given the ultimate sacrifice to their final resting place. The black and white stripes on the wings are there as they were on all Allied aircraft on D-Day, June 6, 1944. The black and the stars and bars proudly displayed represent the armed forces symbol that all United States fighter planes carry. It carries the post-war version because Quicksilver was never a part of the unit until after World War II. The bare metal of this P-51 Mustang is polished. If you get up close and look into it, you can see for whom I'm better. Scott's dad, Bill, did all of the metal work. The remanufactured parts are handmade. Unlike the hurried war effort parts, these are made with the skill and care of a master craftsman and obtain the utmost attention to detail necessary to restore this Mustang to a condition better than factory new. As this silver bird quickly streaks across the sky, let us not forget the reserve and sacrifice and gain their all. built in great numbers by the Packard Motor Car Company of Detroit, Michigan. 
TRONG TƯƠNG LAI